ex-guest. He's basketball royalty, a three-time NBA shootout champion. Thrice, he led the league in three-point shooting percentage, and he's a two-time NBA champion. Also won another two championships as a coach on the sidelines. He won those titles, though, playing in his hometown with the Chicago Bulls in 91 and 92. A big welcome to Chicago's own Craig Hodges. <laughs> All right, so you're an NBA champion, you're an author now too. In right. your book, Long Shot, you talk about what you went through and how you try to, to prolong that fame and right. making a lasting impact on your community. But I want to start first, Craig, by asking you about something in my research. Mm -hmm. And I knew about you before, I didn't have to research a lot. Gotcha. But I found a story about the 91 NBA Finals. It's mm -hmm. Bulls versus Lakers. It's right. on the heels of everything that happened with Rodney King out in L.A. Right. And you approached the two icons in that game, Magic of the Lakers, MJ, your teammate with the Bulls, and you mm -hmm. had a proposal with everything going on in the world, something bigger than the basketball game. Can you elaborate? Well, you know, for me, during that period of time, um, one of the issues was uh, ma upper management and no blacks being owners and the like. And for me, knowing that, you know, 21 of the 24 athletes in the championship were African Americans. So at that point in time, knowing the history of what Jerry West and Elgin Baylor were able to accomplish during the 1963 All-Star Game by attempting a boycott and not having to use it, but just using it as a bully pulpit, I felt that we had that same opportunity, man, to be able to stand up and speak to those issues that need to be spoken to. And what, what were Magic and MJ's responses? Well, so their, boycott well their main thing was that it was a bit too extreme and that they didn't know enough about the issues. And I think to some degree that's a bailout. But at the same time, you know, you can't tell anybody what to do at that time or their money or what their influence is. And for me, growing up as a civil rights uh, baby uh, in Chicago Heights and knowing that you know, the freedom fighters that went before me and what they sacrificed and that I'm just part of that, that, that cloth, man. Yeah, you expressed frustration with Michael's mm -hmm. lack of wanting to get out in front. I mean, he had the biggest voice of any athlete Absolutely. on the planet. Yeah. And yet still he shied away from it. He even had the, the comment where Republicans buy shoes too, meaning he didn't want to upset anybody that could be a potential consumer. How do you feel about him when you were playing with him in his refusal, and where do you think he's at now? What's the relationship? Well, I, you know, back then, one of the things that, you know, people were trying to cause a beef between he and I, and my thing has always been to whom much is given, much is required, and it's not on me to tell you what to do and when to do it, but all in all, it's just the main thing that you can do a lot from where you stand, and uh, Michael, similar to where LeBron is in the game today, uh, has a great opportunity to do a lot for a lot of people who can't do for themselves, and that's all my issue was, is that we can get together and do a lot greater things. If we can win championships, we can do a lot of stuff off the court also. 92, you guys go to the White House like every championship mm -hmm. team does, and you spend time there with, at that time, President Bush, right. the father, mm -hmm. um, George H.W. Right. And you put a pretty strongly worded letter together about basically the plight of, of, of black people right. in the world. Yeah, and, and that got you blackballed, essentially, from the league. Yeah. At 32 years old, you'd never get another opportunity to play simply for voicing your opinion about the problems going on in the world. Do you yeah. have any regrets? Not at all. And for me, you know, like I said, I grew up in Chicago Heights, uh, part of the civil rights movement. Haven't had a chance to go to Long Beach State and study black studies under some bright minds and to know that you have an opportunity as well as a responsibility to your community. And, and that's the way I took it. And, and when we went to the White House, I had written letters to my Congress people growing up. And to get a chance to actually go to the seat of power and not speak on behalf of poor people, people who have been disenfranchised and the like, that's what, that was my... You know, that's my mission, man. So for me to go and think and, and not say anything, uh, silence is violence. You know, it, it's absolutely wild how everything mm -hmm. comes full circle no here question. today. We've got Colin Kaepernick, formerly of the San Francisco 49ers, mm -hmm. who has famously taken a knee this past right. season during the national anthem. He now finds himself in a similar position. When the story came out, he can't find a job now. When he obviously is talented enough absolutely. to be on an NFL roster, I immediately thought Mahmoud abdul Raouf. Yes, I sir. immediately thought Craig Hodges, who's Thank sitting you. here with Thank me you. today. People who took their voice, used that platform mm -hmm. to put out there what's going on in the world right. and suffer the consequences. What do you feel about what's going on with Colin Kaepernick? I mean, he deserves to be on a roster, right? right? And, it's and the same thing you went through. Right, and, and once again, whenever we're in this uh, forum, we make sure that we reach out and say, you know, kudos to him and that we support his stance that he's taken and we support the fact that right now his family's suffering from night. Any chance to talk with uh, him? Well, I've spoken to his representative, okay. so hopefully in the near future, he, I, and uh, McMool could sit down and talk and possibly have a, a meeting of the minds on the, just how it feels about it. And, you know, and for me to know that right now it's that time for him to get ready to play and he's not able to play. And to know that you're able to play and you don't have a venue is, is tough. And that's the politics of sport that I think a lot of young athletes really need to research and understand that there's a certain amount of sacrifice that goes into this thing, not only to be a great athlete, but to be um, 
a great motivator for people who are behind you and to be an innovator in your sport and to stand on what's right, man. So I give kudos to Colin and let him know that he's not alone out here and that you can see just by what's going on with the ratings in the NFL that, yeah. you know, people are really standing up, taking a taking an understanding that, you know, politics and sports have some type of a connection and oftentimes it can be an ugly connection. Absolutely, Craig. Well, the shot clock's winding down. i got about 15 seconds left. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us about Long Shot the Book here, which I'm taking that one home with oh, you. Yeah, yeah this, this is yours, man. Uh, you thing. know, it, yeah. there you go. It's, uh, it's one of those things where for me, uh, having seen all those people speculating about what went on in my career online, I wanted to make sure I had my own, um, you know, legacy to write for my sons and grandbabies so that they can see what I stood for during my experience in the professional world and, and what we can do as far as people and young people are concerned especially. Yeah, you know, an absolute throwback. We wish we saw more of it in today's world. An activist and an athlete and a great, and a great humanist. <laughs> Craig's you. book is also a great read. It's called Long Shot. You can pick it up anywhere you buy books in Chicago.